Radiotherapy can cause many different side effects, such as tiredness. The side effects you get will depend on the area you're having treatment to. This video is about the side effects you might have when having radiotherapy to the head and neck. Mouth soreness and throat soreness with head and neck radiotherapy is very common, unfortunately. If it, the soreness is on the outside on your skin, they might recommend particular creams that you can use to help with that. If the pain is internal, you may be referred to the doctor and the doctor will suggest some medication to help control the pain. Probably, I think it was from week two to week three when the radiotherapy uh, side effects started really impacting me. But at that point, really, I was unable to eat. The ability to take food down your food tract with that level of uh, inflammation and ulcers uh, was just too difficult. So mouth soreness can continue for up to three months. The team will support you during that time, whether that be with some medication or some skincare advice. They'll also check your mouth quite regularly to make sure you don't have an infection, which might be slowing down the recovery time. They always checked the condition of my mouth and made sure that it was in good health, recovering, and if there was any issues, they just supported and advised me on, on the best way to deal with it. My saliva glands were very close to some of the areas uh, affected by cancer, so they did warn me that there was a high likelihood that my saliva glands would have some problems. So radiotherapy can cause damage to the salivary glands. There are lots of things you can do to help with that. Small sips of water can ensure that your mouth stays moist. Little spritzer sprays or nebulizers, stream treatments can also help. Even now, my saliva glands still don't work as well as they did beforehand. You'll find me sipping on water on a regular basis to, to offset the impact of the saliva gland uh, limitation. You may find that your taste alters. Um, if this is the case, you might find that food and drinks that you previously loved do taste very different. Sometimes people report they taste a bit metallic. If this is the case, please consult your dietitian and they'll be able to support you with that. It's like if like a battery taste. I don't know how I know that, but that's how I'd best describe it. It's very unpleasant. So anything you're eating, you just you can't taste that food, it's just metallic taste. At the end of my treatment, um, it still carried on, but it was slowly dying down. And then when it went, I was very happy because I ate as much as I wanted. Unfortunately, weight loss with head and neck radiotherapy is very common. Obviously, we don't want you to lose too much weight, so we would work very closely with a dietitian to support you. The clinical team in advance warned me I would lose weight. They told me to prepare for it. They told me to eat lots of calories in advance, and I thought they were kidding, really, but the reality is, you know, the weight did drop very, very quickly. Initially, if you start to notice any problems eating, we would recommend you start to move to a slightly softer diet foods that are soft, easy to swallow, but highly nutritious. Soups and gravies, and maybe move on to some scrambled eggs and rice puddings. If you then find that that starts to become problematic, we do have some special little drinks that you can use as a meal replacement. I had a smoothie drink that was given to me by the um, doctors. It's like a smoothie with calories in and it's a small bottle, so you're just um, topping up what you're missing, not eating and drinking fully. My swallow mechanism just stopped working, so everything I, I had to take was being taken through the uh, stomach tube. Occasionally the radiotherapy can have a real impact on how easily you can swallow, and if this starts to become very problematic, they may suggest they use feeding tubes to help ensure you are getting the right nutrients.
Radiotherapy can cause some bone weakening. So as a result of that, we would recommend you are referred to a dentist before you start a course of radiotherapy. They will look at all of your teeth and any teeth that already appear weak and damaged may be removed before you start treatment. The dentist and even the doctors and consultants said that after you've had radiotherapy and if it's been near the mouth area or teeth, that it can make dental treatments more painful and I did find that. Post-treatment, you have to really, really look after your teeth. So I go to the dentist every three months. Any th problems with your teeth have to be nipped in the bud. They found cancer in my voice box, so that was part of the treatment area. Uh, as the weeks progressed in treatment, I started losing it. If you're having radiotherapy to your larynx, your voice box, you may well find that you end up with an altered voice. This can happen during treatment, um, and we can't always guarantee your voice will be the same as it was after treatment. I lost it in total probably for, a, for a, maybe two weeks, so my wife had a peaceful couple of weeks for that period of time, um, and, it, and it, it then just came back. But it was quite fragile, so I learned to take it easy. Um, and even now, again, 18, 20 months after treatment, I can feel it if I talk too much. We would recommend you rest your voice as much as possible, and if needed, carry a pen and paper around with you so you can continue to communicate. My hair loss from radiotherapy, you could see it sort of weeks and months later. It slowly and gradually started to sort of go bold at the top. Hair loss is common, um, but only in the area exposed to the radiation beam. Every hair in the treatment area, whether it's on the back of my neck uh, or, or my neck or my, the front of my throat neck area, had just fallen out. The majority of hair does grow back, but we can't always guarantee that it definitely will. And it doesn't always grow back in quite the same way that it used to. I try to embrace it because it's part of, you know, my cancer story, but I like having my fringe and I just think I'll probably keep it. If you're experiencing a side effect that hasn't been covered in this video, you can find more information on the Cancer Research UK website.